100 black people were held as slaves in Upper Canada. Welcome to the house of Ana Israel where the most high dwell. We know who we are. We know who he made us to be. We're going to be rising from the ashes. The message today is going to be about Genesis 15, 13. Shalom Israel. That was a track by me, by the way. Check it out on YouTube. Reverb Nation. Remixed. It's hot. So, message today is about um, Genesis 15, 13. Um, and he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. In this chapter, Yah made a promise to Abram, who later became Abraham, concerning his seed. Yah says, Know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Now, now remember, when we read the Bible, we see that there was 430 years, and there were 400 years. Okay? The 400 years was, was never proven um, to be spent in uh, the land of Egypt or anywhere else, only but when we came here in 1619. Scholars have scholars and Bible experts point to this prophecy as being fulfilled when the children of Israel spent 430 years in Egypt. But if we closely examine, if we closely examine what Yah actually said, we'll see there's more to this. The Hebrews walked into Egypt. They walked into Egypt. Rather, they were brought into Egypt with Pharaoh's own wagons. Genesis 45, 19, 21, 27. They were, not sla they were not slaves and they were not mistreated. At this time, Joseph was viceroy. Joseph was viceroy. He was a governor. Because of this, they, had, they held a very favorable position among the Egyptians. Genesis uh, 45, 18 through 20, 24. The Bible tells us that the oppression of the Hebrews began after Joseph, after Joseph, all his brethren, and the entire generation that entered Egypt died out. Then, then there was a population growth among the Hebrews. Exodus 1, 6-11. Scripture also says that Joseph lived for 110 years. He saw his son Ephraim's children of the third generation, the children also of Makar, the son of Manasseh, Joseph's, uh, Joseph's other son, were brought up on Joseph's knees. Genesis 50, 23-26. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Joseph lived a long, long enough, he lived a long enough life to see his grandchildren. This is how long he lived. The children of Israel were only in Egypt 430 years. In order for the prophecy in Genesis 15, 13 to be fulfilled, they would have to have been oppressed for four, for 400 years. So this means that after 30 years of being in Egypt, the evil treatment should have begun. But the fact is, 30 years after their arrival, they were still in good favor with the Egyptians. As was stated, the oppression became or began after Joseph died and Joseph's death took place well after the first 30 years in Egypt. Also, during the time of Joseph's death, the Hebrews were still treated well by the Egyptians. The evidence for this can be found in Genesis 50, 26. Line upon line, precept upon precept, I'm going to give you the scriptures. We are told that Joseph was embalmed and put into a coffin in Egypt. In ancient Egypt, 
embalming and coffin burials were reserved for royalty, members of Pharaoh's court and the rich. So this tells us Joseph was still in good favor with the Egyptians when he died. And if Joseph was still treated well by the Egyptians at his death, so were the Hebrews. This is just um, a fact. Exodus 1a says, Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Listen to that. Which knew not Joseph. This is a very profound statement because Joseph was second in charge to Pharaoh. Exodus 41, 42 to 44. Being viceroy would have made Joseph a very popular and well-known man throughout the land of Egypt, particularly in the house of Pharaoh. Ancient Egyptian history tells us that one could only claim the Pharaoh's throne if he was the son of Pharaoh, a prince. He was a high-ranking member of the king's court. He was another male member of the Pharaoh's family. If a coup took place, in any case, the next Pharaoh would have known who Joseph was because Joseph also was in the king's courts and knew all the king's sons, all the high-ranking members, and all of Pharaoh's male family members. Scholars have stated that Joseph and the Hebrews were in Egypt when the people known as the Hycosis. Now listen to this. Check this out, y'all. As the people named the called the Hycosis were in charge. They tried to make a point that the Hycosis were the ones showing favor to the Hebrews and not the native Egyptians. The Hycosis, also known as the Shepherd Kings, did conquer and rule Egypt for over 200 years. The dominion of Egypt was known in Egyptian history as the Great Humiliation. If we look deeply into scripture, we'll find that the Egyptians in Joseph's time were in fact native Egyptians. First, let's consider the conversation Joseph had with the Hebrews who were first to arrive in Egypt. He was instructing them on how to respond to one of Pharaoh's questions. In verse 34 of Genesis 46, 31 through 34, Joseph says to them, When Pharaoh asked their occupation, that you should say, your servants' trade have been about cattle for our youth, even until now. Both we and also our fathers, that you may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. This statement alone proves that the Hycosis were not in charge of Egypt during the time of Joseph. The Hycosis were known as the shepherd kings, or kings of the shepherds. So why would every shepherd be an abomination to the shepherd kings? But every shepherd would be an abomination to native Egyptians. Because shepherd kings, hycosis, had brought great humiliation to the Egyptians. Let's look at what happened after Israel, Jacob, died. And the thing Joseph had done to his body, Genesis 52-3, and Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. And the physicians embalmed Israel. And forty days were fulfilled for him. For so are fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him seventy days. Seventy days. Embalming was a practice of the native Egyptians. They were the first culture on earth to embalm their dead. Embalming was not done to all the population of Egypt. Just a select few. The practice of embalming was something done by a highly developed society. The Hycosis, on the other hand, were shepherds and embalming was more than likely not in their culture. So if the Hycosis were ruling Egypt during the time of Joseph, why did they retain Egyptian culture? When a nation conquers another, the conqueror always places their culture above that of the conquered nations. This is one way that the conqueror shows superiority over the conqueror. This has always been the case in, in ancient and modern times. This is exactly what has happened in the invasion of the Americas by the Europeans. Because the Egyptians were still embalming according to native Egyptian culture, it stands to reason that native Egyptians were ruling Egypt. Okay, Scripture clearly shows that Egyptians were ruling Egypt during the time of Joseph in the Hebrews' so sojourn. Now back to my point of the new king um, coming to power and not knowing Joseph. 
in order for this to happen, a, uh, a few pharaohs had to have come to power and, and with each of them a new vice royal or new government. This also means that after Joseph's death, enough time had elapsed where Joseph's memory in the house of Pharaoh was long forgotten. And the Hebrews were no longer seen as good neighbors, but a foreign treat. Oh, I'm sorry, a foreign threat. <laughs> this is not hard to believe. Ask the average citizen of your country who was in power at the turn of the 20th century, who was second in authority. Many, if not, if not all people, including governmental officials, will not know the answer. Many years has passed and Joseph and his good deeds were long forgotten. How much time had elapsed? We can only speculate, but we can be assured that it was more than 30 years of the 430 that they spent in Egypt. The Hebrews' oppression in Egypt did not last 400 years. Listen, it did not last in 400 years. Exactly how long did it last? We can only speculate on that as well, but we we do know that it lasted no less than 80 years. This was the age of Moses when the Hebrews were liberated. Israel was in slavery from the time Moses was born to the time they were freed, which was 80 years. Acts 7, 6 says that the Hebrews would be brought into bondage, be brought into bondage in a strange land. And those that bring them into bondage will entreat them evil 400 years and no less than 399. If we put this with the other information that has been presented on, on my study, we'll see that this prophecy was fulfilled with the advent of the transatlantic slave trade. Yes, that's what I said. The transatlantic slave trade, 400 years, 1619 to 2019. Any good black history book would tell you that the only Hebrews, the so-called blacks, the so-called blacks, the so-called blacks, have been mistreated continually for over 400 years with every form of racism, including slavery, lynching, segregation, um, Jim Crow, and the list goes on and on. And it has been a nonstop oppression which still continues today. The Hebrews were brought to this hemisphere as slaves or chattel slaves in the 1500s, which was over 400 years ago. This prophecy of being in a strange land 400 years and being treated evil didn't happen in Egypt. Then where? The only feasible answer would be in the Americas. This is the strange land that is not ours. This is where we have been afflicted continually for 400 years. Acts 7-6. Now let me make this clear. Some of our people came over here um, before 1619, but they weren't slaves. Okay? We didn't come over here as slaves until 1619. Acts 7-6 tells us that the Hebrews were to be brought. Acts 7-6 tells us that the Hebrews were to be brought into bondage. Ancient Israel was not brought into bondage to Egypt they, as I have already mentioned, were in good favor with the Egyptians of Joseph's day. They lived peacefully with them in the beginning. They were not made slaves until much later. Only the Hebrews of the Americas were brought into bondage into a strange land and entreated evil for over 400 years. No other group can prove that this has happened to them, just as prophecy said it would. Listen, let me tell you something. The Ashkenazi Jews that are in Jerusalem right now, that are, um, the Sephardics, um, Jews that are in America and any, anywhere else, they cannot prove this. Okay, if you ask them that, they might not answer your question. They might bumble it, but they cannot prove this. They cannot prove that they was in Egypt um, for 430 years. Um, even if we look at history, even if we look at the um, the pyramids, if we look at the walls um, in Egypt, there are no Ashkenazi Jews in there. There are no Ashkenazi Jews on the walls. The, the, the slaves they took, they took, took over are our complexion. They look like us. They look like us. So go back into your Bible. Read again. No other group can prove that this happened to them. Just as this prophecy said it would in the um, Apocalypse of Abraham, 32, 1 through 6 states, Therefore hear Abraham and see, Behold, your seventh generation shall go with you, 
and they will go out into an alien land and they will enslave them and oppress them as as for one hour of the impious age. Excuse me. But of that nation whom they shall serve, I am the judge. I am the judge. So whoever puts us in bondage, the Father is going to be judge over them after our 400 years is up. And the Almighty also said this, Have you heard, Abraham, what I told you, what your tribe will encounter in the last days? Abraham, having heard, accepted the words of the Almighty in his heart. The prophecy in Genesis 15 is to be fulfilled in these last days. These last days. I warned y'all when um, September 2019 came upon us that it was going to get worse because our 400 years was up. Now we're, we're at the point where we're looking at Moses and how long it took Moses to come out of Egypt, to bring us out of Egypt and what happened during that time period. The 400 years in Genesis 15, 13 is not to exceed 499 years. We have been here for over 400 years. 400 years now. We're at the point in the time of our coming out. We're in a strange land that is not our own. We are not owners of this land. We are only citizens. If the rulers decide we can no longer be citizens, what will stop them from, de from deporting us, from deporting us, from deporting us, to some other place. I only say that so you that are listening to me, that are hearing my voice, will understand how Genesis 15, 13 was a prophecy for the later days in which we are living now. We are living in the later days now, people. Okay? Everything we see happening going on today, the, uh, the plagues, the locusts, the pandemics, the COVID-19, um, the, the, the looting, the rumors of wars, everything that's going on right now, racial tension, racial wars coming up. This is all happening because we are in the end times and the 400 years is up. Listen, the 400 years is up. Okay, It doesn't take Nick Cannon or a football player or anybody else to let, let you know that we're Shemitic. That we're Semitic and not Hermetic. We're not of JFAB. The Bible explains it specifically. Specifically. Get in your Bible. Okay? Stop skipping the genealogies. Stop skipping the genealogies. They're in there for a reason. Okay? They're in there for a reason. There's more in the Bible than just uh, financial or prosperity. or You can't have any of that. Or true prosperity... Unless you're following the commands and the laws of the Most High. Okay? Because the Father said that He rules on the just as well as the unjust. So just because somebody goes to school and they get an education or they might grow up rich, uh, you know, that doesn't truly make them blessed. That just makes them have a lot of money. Okay? There were a lot of people that were evil in the scriptures that had a lot of money. Okay, kings that were evil, that had a lot of territory, a lot of money. Okay, a lot of people under them. But that didn't make them chosen of the Most High. So you so-called blacks, okay, I want you to go back into your Bible and read. And check out what the Most High is telling us. We are in those last days. The Father is asking for his people to come back to who he is. To who he has us to be. This is Joseph B. Israel. For Benai Israel Ministries. New England. Where the Most High dwell. We know who we are. We know who he made us to be. And we're rising. From the ashes. You get a chance. Um, go to www.yahweh.com forever yhwh forever three dot com check out our clothing i am israel keep the shabbat ten commandments holy days and the covenant support all black businesses support all your hebrew businesses okay 
Only way we're gonna grow together is if we support each other. Support Hebrew music. Support Hebrew clothing. Support Hebrew uh, health and beauty products. Support everything Hebrew. <laughs> Hello, let's rock out. Swing low to the bottom of dirt, the back street. Y'all will make a way to to the river, see your escape. On the other side of the chariot, waiting to pick you up. On the road, we'll be in love and get stuck. Look at my people, look at the color, it was never lost. Burned in the blood of fear, it was a boy of peace, but it either we had to leave the land. On the ground, bro, when it's safe, we had to duck north. Then Mount Sinai is my course, and I'm on my course. With civil rights, catch me, I'm done. Headed to Africa, sitting on the creek with my son. That's my own life, but you're delivered from the doors of the night. So who never gave a who? I see you on the shores of my country. I'm going to let him loose. But stains all of my mental and suicide. Got it. Reason for the blood of the land. I know my man got it. Waiting for the blue hop to death. The finish it in me. The hunt is a century. Son, it's in my minutes. I'm a switch swing low. It's time to get out of the room. Let's get, get, go. The devil never wants you to see my flow. But I'm going to break up my people. It's time to. It's time to. I'm a switch swing low. It's time to get out of the room. Let's get, get, go. The devil never wants you to receive my flow. But I'm awake of my people with time to go. Get the time to go. So I'm a guy for the ministry. All the eyes in the kind. Fighting through a person that's less than it meant. I'm an Israelite to the end of the earth. The fire's coming. Once you're in the front of my house so that I can watch you running. Mosai gave me the will to be strong and worship him. This is on the corner of my garments. I had to purchase them. I'ma stay free to the day that I see the clear water. So I do the God of Eden. Don't need a land of sport. I'm a big mistake, but I promise you. www.yahwehforever3.com Check out our gear Check out our apparel Black Hebrew owned, baby All praises to the Most High Yah And I'm a Shia Yeshua Much love to my people Much love to Israel Love y'all Let's stop all the fighting, let's stop all the killing. Let's come together. This is a remix I did, by the way. Swing Low. Produced by me, written by me, remixed by me. Shabbat Shalom.